Welcome to my classroom, December 2022. I just finished my last day of childcare for the year, and now it's time to change it up for the new group of children. So what I've done is I have not fully cleaned up the classroom, just part of the way, because I do wanna change some things up and make it new for the new year. I also have some projects to do over the holidays. Let's start from the beginning. So when you walk in my classroom door here, you can see the bathroom. We took the door off so that I can maintain sight lines with the children as we play in the classroom. And immediately to the right, I have the change table area. So this is the change table area. I just have an old dresser here that has drawers and each child has their own drawer with their names labeled. So I've got um, three children right now, including my own. And in January, I'm going to have six plus, depending on some part-time children. So everybody will get their own drawer here. And then this dresser has some middle drawers that I keep supplies in. So this one I keep cloths. This one I keep, as you can see, plastic bags for um, putting poopy diapers in so it doesn't stink up our classroom. And then this one I have extra garbage bags, band-aids, some other random things like that. So you'll see this is my son's drawer. We've got some extra diapers here and extra clothes um, and wipes as well. And then I just have a wipeable vinyl change pad on top and it's actually secured with um, command strips so like velcro command strips in two spots and there was a strap that I did use but um, it got ripped off because children and then beside the change table I keep a basket here with extra wipes the children do provide their own wipes but um, you know you always run out and need extras and also my son just uses these and some Vaseline and in this bowl I usually keep gloves here but there's not full right now and a light to make it a warm little space because this is a dark corner beside I have just a regular garbage can that I change out every day and this is our sump pump room but obviously we don't need to go in there often so we just um, pretend it's not there and I have some hooks on the door there and I keep if there's cloth diaper children I keep wet bags here for them each day and send them home each day so that's my son's wet bag and um, also if they like spill water on their sweater, I'll just hang it up there to dry for the day kind of thing. And then every child also has their own little basket up here. And this, if it's stocked, has their diaper cream and a package of wipes as well as a few diapers. And so this is what I pull down. Usually just set it there while I change their diaper. Above is just storage, so there's uh, my box of gloves and some sunscreen and stuff like that, and extra wipes. And then on the other side, I just have um, the washrooming chart, and all the children's names are on the side here under these pink sticky notes. And then I write the time and you know what occurred. And so this is my little chart up here. So BM bowel movement, W for wet. Um, when they're starting to toilet train, I use PT to mark that they. Um, urinated in the toilet and BMT saying they had a poop in the toilet and TT to say they just tried the toilet so then parents can glance because it's easy to see from the doorway they can literally just stand right here in the doorway and see um, you know what their child was up to today in the washroom and then here we'll go into the bathroom so like I said we took the door off and we just attached a curtain there with a rod. Um, do I ever close the curtain? No, <laughs> but um, it's there just in case. There's a shower in here, which I currently just use for storage, but I've had some ideas about how I could maybe use it as like a sensory area. So maybe someday we'll do that and that could be pretty neat. And then obviously a toilet and a vanity. We've got the Ikea stool so children can help themselves. Like I said, I'm in the middle of cleaning up, so there's just some clutter around. A big mirror for children to see themselves, and this window actually serves as a place where we wave goodbye to our parents, because that's where the parents park out there. Um, I wish we had bigger windows, but this is the space I have, so we make do with what we have and make it 
a nice place to be. And then these hooks over here um, will have the children's names labeled and we have each child has a hand towel for their day for the day and then this is the laundry over here and the children know this is the laundry it's even labeled and they put their own laundry in there when they're done and compost over there for their tissues and you'll see the stool right there is usually in front of the toilet for when we're trying the toilet and then this chair here is for me so I can sit down and help children on the toilet or sometimes we do um, diaper changes standing up so that's the bathroom so you can see the doorway here and this is the space the children see on their left opposite from the change table area here and they come in and we have a nice fireplace over here so we are currently in the middle of adding making it electric so it was a wood burning stove but um, we don't need that in this space nor could we probably it would just be in the way so uh, we do have um, gas heat in the house so we don't need a wood burning fireplace but it's a beautiful architectural element and adds ambiance so we have an electric fireplace we can turn on and have the fire without the heat because I am actually not allowed to have space heaters, which technically that's a space heater, um, as a licensed home child care. So we have the daily schedule as you come in the door. This is just like a peel and stick whiteboard from Staples. And we've got an Ikea um, play shelf here. I got these stools at Winners. They're pretty neat log stools. And then what I have set up here right now is a light pad. So this is what, um, you can use this is for like drawing and tracing um, but it is an inexpensive practical light table so I currently just have some light table materials in here window blocks you can also adjust the brightness on this and then this is our old laptop for playing with and I don't have super intentional materials in here right now um, so we will revamp that for the new year. I think it's just paper, just paper in here, which doesn't really make sense right now. And then puzzle piece. Right when you come in, you see kind of the teacher area here, which again, it's messy right now because I'm in the middle of transitioning. All right, so I'm gonna take you through the teacher zone here. Um, this is where I keep like pens and scissors and string and all that good stuff. And this bucket's personal things like lip chap and hand lotion. I used to have a plant in there, but it died. So we have to, we had to move to fake plants down here, unfortunately. Um, in this rack, I keep my health and safety binder and these are my documentation forms and a little whiteboard magnets there and my attendance binder and some random art materials that are lying around from our art experience. <laughs> In the drawers I just keep more like teacher supplies and lamination papers and stuff. And then underneath this bucket's supposed to be here. That's um, like paint smocks and claws for painting and sensory obviously a vacuum, recycling bin that needs to be taken out, and then this is where I keep my brooms and my sweeper. There. And then this side is the kind of kitchenette area. This is just a craft project drying on my counter there. This is another space that's going to be getting a revamp. Um, on the shelf here I keep all of our dishes and hand sanitizer in here and then up here is where I keep a bucket for the dirty dishes so after we finish eating I just pop the dirty dishes in the bin and then at the end of the day I take that upstairs to wash um, microwave I make the food either in the morning or the day before and we store it in the fridge and reheat it here bin for water bottles for the children menu um, hot water kettle and then this is my sanitizer, which I usually have one here and then one over by the change table, but again, needs a refill. 
In my drawer here I have green bin bags, plastic baggies for when needed, and cutlery. And then so far this um, has nothing in it. <laughs> and in these boxes I have bibs, face cloths, and extra like tea towel type things down here. And then this is a bin of like dried foods and I just keep that on just to be extra health conscious in the basement. And um, that's just a bin of Play-Doh that we used yesterday. So next to this area we have the table. This is the table that we eat at and do um, art projects on and everything in between. We spend lots of time going back and forth to our table. I just have um, some wooden benches that my brother made and I just pop them up on the table so we can vacuum. And then this chair, like the one in the bathroom, is the one that I sit on at the end of the table. And then this is an Ikea high chair that um, has shorter legs that nestles really nicely up against the table. I'm going to take it down and show you. So you can see it's like the perfect height. Um, so the younger infants can sit with their peers at the table and be buckled in. I have two of these. They're awesome. Another window in here. We have three windows in our playroom total. Those are the other two. And um, you can see we've got a branch from outside hanging above our table with things that the children created. Um, this kind of like has a little theme of all seasons. So we've got the flowers, you know, for the summertime or spring and snowflakes and leaves and all that kind of stuff. One of the first things you notice in our classroom is that we have twinkle lights. Because it is a basement, we try to make it feel like a cozy, inviting space with the twinkle lights since we don't have a lot of natural light down here. So beside our table, we have, this is like our meeting area, we call this the circle carpet. So on the circle carpet, we meet here between transitions. So after we clean up and we're ready to go outside, we meet here. We maybe read a story, sing a song, or just gather, take deep breaths before we move on to get our outdoor clothes on. So I try to make this a cozy space. Obviously right now the fireplace is covered up, so hopefully this will look completely different in a week or so. Currently the mantle has zero thought put into it. So what I want to do is when we redo this fireplace, like recenter what this space is and reorganize it and make it feel inviting and not cluttered because that's stressful when it's super cluttered. So this is a good space for children to sit and do some puzzles, snuggle up with a book. So there's lots of books there. And I got this easel recently to add to our classroom. So my thought is having a flip chart here and we can um, document the children's learning on it and then just flip it over so that we have the opportunity to look back on children's learning and flip through it if the children are curious and that could spark new interests and learning opportunities. Beside the easel here we have their portfolios. I'm not going to tilt it down too far because of their names are showing and this is where I put pieces of documentation or their artwork or pictures of them uh, each month and it's at the end of their time with me it's a little glimpse into their experience here. And then on top here I just have notebooks for the children and they each have their own. This is a place where they can engage with literacy materials like pencil and line paper and there's no rules to this. Every once in a while or every time they color in it, I try to catch them and write the date just so that you can always go back and see how they're developing with their um, wrist development, their cognitive development, and their language and literacy. Above this we have a laundry hanger for hanging our artwork to dry and that transitions us into our art and sensory space. This is an Ikea sensory bin we love it. It's great to interchange these bins. They're the same ones that go in that unit and it is just awesome to have these. They're so good for so many things. Sometimes I even just set the bins on the table for the children to use. So they have their own individual sensory bin if we need. So on this side, don't mind our big old giant art hanging to dry. On this side of the easel, I want to have paint always up there so the children can go and paint whenever they feel they need to paint and a mirror with some twinkle lights because this is another great opportunity for exploration. Above this area we have huge shelves that we added in September. 
with art and sensory materials. Again, it is very cluttered and I hope to do a video just on organizing the art material space here. So you can see there's some paints and other coloring materials, items for gluing, glue, scissors, rulers, and then there's some loose parts up there for sensory table and also just random storage I've thrown up there. This tray or cart here has materials the children can choose to put in their sensory bin. A lot of those are being washed right now because we had a jello sensory bin yesterday. So children can help themselves to those materials. Things like measuring cups, bowls, funnels, any sort of tools like that. Sponges. So next to our table and across from our sensory area here, we have like a home space set up for the children for imaginary play at the moment. This is a kitchen center from Ikea and this wooden one over here was my mother-in-law's when she was a little girl. She has let me borrow it. We've got baby dolls and lots of loose parts in this area here. Real materials, wood, pottery, glass. This is a bowl of mason jar lids and there's a bowl for spools here. Cups, plates, all sorts of stuff. And a new purchase was this little table with four chairs and more loose parts for the children to pretend. Behind the kitchen center, we've got a big shelf right now. And this is kind of our larger motor play block zone. We've got some scarves here. This can be used for imaginary play or in their block play. Just another loose part material that's a little bit different. More loose parts in here. Can these are candle lids. And these are just like nature wicker balls. A basket of misfit blocks and then some more blocks sorted by shape. Over here we have some loose part building circles that go together, or that for younger children they can just be like a loose part. Music and some materials we change out up on this shelf here. Connecting to the space we have some vehicles, balls, big cardboard box, this is for gross motor exploration, this rainbow rocker, which can be flipped upside down and it will rock. This is a foam um, connecting tiles. And these are large vinyl blocks. The children's artwork on the walls. Over here we have mason jars with more loose parts. There are twinkle lights that are up there too. They're just not on. Another fake plant just to bring some fake life to the space <laughs> and some more books and other materials. This was like an entertainment unit that maybe was renovated in like the 70s but I guess it adds like a little feature to our room. I'm not going to show you because of children's faces but we have a family tree um, pic photo frame collage just above this here and it kind of brings your eye in when you walk in the room to the back of the room and um, centers it and I love that it's a tree it's got that naturey feel and then over here we have our Christmas tree so this Christmas tree we decorated together wrapped some garland lights and the children made their own ornaments to put on all the children in my group celebrate Christmas so this is what we did this year and inside we've got a cozy place to read a book or to snuggle with some pillows there's some stuffed animals beside they can bring in. More mason jars and books behind this. And then this leads us into our small world play zone. So our small, small world play here is beside the sensory zone and you can kind of see where it connected there. I have this old trunk, this really soft, squishy, kind of grass-like carpet, 
and then some shelves at child height and this shelf currently is serving its purpose as like a dollhouse because I don't have a dollhouse yet. I'm still figure, trying to decide what kind of dollhouse I want and if I want to make it myself. And then some, so all the dollhouse materials are wooden and we've got some winter animals, kind of a winter scene over here. And on top of the trunk, we had a nativity set, which we're going to switch out now that it's um, going to be the new year. This nativity set I found at the thrift store and somebody had crocheted it or knit um, and worked really hard on it. So it's pretty awesome. The children have loved it.